The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Hawaii Camp Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's good to go. It's a move. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Another Sunday edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. So glad you could be with us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And we are ready to go once again as uh, Guy Pichette last week after waiting so many years to get back on television made it pay off. It certainly was. In control most of the match. Mike Sargent made a couple runs at him, but he came right back with his own marks. And uh, uh, he made a mark for himself last week. By the way, we should mention uh, we had to... Uh, bail out of the uh, end of last week's match because of time constraints. So for those of you who might have been scoring at home, we forgot to mention the final score for both bowlers, but uh, Guy Pichette ended up winning that match 385 to 365. Mike Sargent with a spare and three in the final box, and that was the way it ended up with Guy Pichette winning by 20. So now he goes for two wins in a row, and let's meet both of our bowlers. First of all, our number five seed as he comes back for his second straight appearance from Danville, New, Danville, New Hampshire, Guy Pichette. A guy averaging 118, a high triple of 457, and his roll-off score was 651. And last week, of course, that big 385 to get that first win in his first appearance here on the wins, and now he'll face our number three seed from Milford, New Hampshire, Bill Coffold. Okay, Billy comes in averaging 126, has a high single of 210, roll-off score 666. All right, we have $50 in bonus money and the bonus ball contest at the end of the hour, and also bonus money available to both of the bowlers for consecutive marks. We'll get you straight away with all of that and tell you more about today's match and get it started between Guy Pichette and Bill Coffold right after these messages. Don't go away. All right, Guy Pichette with that win last week over Mike Sargent. Today he takes on our number three seed, Bill Coffold. The winner of this match meets our number two seed, Bob Kelly, next week. And two weeks from today, Tom Morgan, the number one seed, will be in to try and defend that number one spot. Guy Pichette to start the match. Last week, uh, if you missed it, Guy making his first appearance on television in 16 years a week ago, and he turned it into a win over a pretty formidable opponent, Mike Sargent. And in that match last week, uh, Guy got the better of it, really, on lane 31. Here on lane 32, he wasn't quite as fortunate. He never did quite figure this lane out. He almost did in that ball. That was a tough spare in the 4 7 six, ten. He almost converted it, but he'll settle before the 10. Guy had 15 marks in that match a week ago, 11 spares and four strikes. All four of the strikes came right over here where he is now on lane 31 here at Park Place Lanes. And look out. <laughs> Almost had another one. Everything but the six pin. Piece of wood just to the left. And make up your mind before you deliver the ball, whether you're playing the pin or the wood. Don't want to cap it. Gets it on the sweep. So Guy gets right on the board with his first mark. And here's Bill Coppold. And Bill gets a nice mix on that first ball, the one-two. Missed the head pin to the right, but he'll do that for 29 more boxes if he can <laughs> end up with a leave like this. But now he needs the head pin. Got it for the spare. Starts right off with a mark. Been a little while since Bill was with us here on singles competition. 
his last appearance back in October of 1993 when he also qualified as the number three seed and he lost to Tom Morgan that day the guy who's our number one seed in this series well, I'm sure he'd like a chance to avenge that match because that means he'd win a couple more Tom Morgan as you know is top seed in this slider 10 bucks 25 for Bill Caulfield Guy Pichette working on a spare. Jazz coming up short on the head pin, leaves the four horsemen to the left. Six fill. No, sliding by. Nine box for Guy. 35 now through three. Don't forget bonus money available for the bowlers here. For three consecutive marks. Any combination of spares or strikes. $25 and then 25 additional for each added consecutive mark. $250 for three strikes in a row with $250 additional for each consecutive strike. All the bonus money provided by our good friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Right on Main Street, Route 97, Salem, New Hampshire. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. And uh, there was no, mo no bonus money last week in that match between... Mike Sargent and Guy Pichette, somewhat surprising since there were 27 marks in that match. But they really didn't come in clusters, no. as they sometimes do. 43 now for Guy through four. And now Bill Koffel for his third and fourth. Bill with that very smooth delivery and he takes the extra pin with the 10. He's got that lane down now. Miss the head pin <laughs> to the right, leave yourself the one and the two, then make it for the spare. This ball wants to break from right to left. There it is. Now he'll be looking for something better than a five fill, which is what he had last time. Oh, there it is. Big nine drop, leaving the 10. Well, this wood may be tricky, maybe not. We'll see. It's out away from the pin a little bit. And there you go. You called it. Nothing really he could do except fly at it. So it'll be a 10 box. And an early 11-pin lead for Bill Coffo. Let's see what happened here. You know, he's just above the red line. Maybe a little more on the cap, but regardless, that was a difficult spare leave. Pichette punches through the center. Spread eagle minus the 10 pin. Guy started off last week's match with a 131. He then threw a 139. He had a 32 pin lead after two games and he was able to hold on with just a 115 third game as Mike Sargent was really never able to mount much of an attack. Fifty-one at the halfway point, starting uh, slow this week. 
much like last week, and then he came to life that back half of the first game, and then from then on, he was pulled pretty well. But he's in a difficult spare leave here in the 4, 8, and 10. Looks to me like he just tried to be left of the 4 pin and try to kick that over to the right. Nope. And it's an eight, so two opens, two eight boxes, in fact, three in a row now for Guy Pichette and an opportunity for Bill Coffold here. Well, Ooh. there you go, taking the extra pin again on lane 32. It looked like it was the four, seven, ten left, and then the ten finally went out. Pins all by themselves. Got to hurry. Nope. Bill Koffel does a lot of his bowling at the Londonderry Bowling Center and also at the King Lanes in Manchester. Bill works as the general manager of the Friendly's Restaurant in the Nashua Mall, and Bill tells us that uh, his wife Sheila recently passed the bar. Congratulations. Yes, yes absolutely. And the big strike on lane 31. And he just passed the strike test. <laughs> getting his first strike of the match. Kicking out the four pin right there. Guy Pichette crossing over and leaving the triangle. Six, nine, ten. Right hand corner. For the spare? Yes. His second. Nobody's been able to put two marks together yet. Turn that one over a bit. Just four on the fill. And pull that one to the left, and first that result in only four pins, but seems to be uh, struggling a bit this first game in week number two for Guy. Eight box. 81. Uh, you see Billy Coffle working on a strike. Chance to increase his lead right now at 15. Just catching up to the head pin. There's the strike. Double strike for Bill Coffle. And this is a $250 ball coming up. If he was to throw another one, just tripping the five pin there for the double strike. Doesn't catch up to the head pin that time. Look out, though! Oof, boy. Well, now this ball will be a $25 ball. The three marks in a row? No. Oh, Still though, the double strike with that big first ball will give you a sizable edge. And now all of a sudden, Bill Koffold's lead is 40. That's why that first ball on the double strike is so important. That's the one that counts triple. And Bill was able to trip out those two extra pins, which actually means six extra. Guy Pichette leaving the four horsemen. Oh. 
And oh, there's yes. the spare. Well, last week, Guy was able to uh, kind of get relaxed for the first three or four boxes, and then he got an early lead on Mike Sargent and built the lead throughout. This week, he's going to have to come from behind. And left the ball out to the right of the head pin that time, but just that domino effect again on the four horsemen. Now you'd like a nice eight, nine, or strike on this. And that looks like a pretty good ball. Oh, yes. End. Well, over the last two weeks now, Guy Pichette has thrown five strikes, and all five of them have been on this lane, lane 31. Well, it's a chance to stay there right now because he's filling the strike in the 10th. Two marks in a row. Off the head pin, now he'll shoot the four horsemen on the other side. This for $25 in bonus money as well. Nope, it'll be a nine fill and a 120 for Guy Pichette, but he'll certainly take that. The 39 pins in the last two. I was just going to say that's a quiet 120. Yes. <laughs> Billy Caulfield already at 121. A little short on the head pin that time for Bill. The 1, 2, and 7. That wood cozying up near the 2 pin. Nope. And it's a 9, 130 now through 9. Moves to that uh, famous lane 31. Bill's average is 126. And he's another one of those guys with a 200 game. 210 is high single. Well, wants either the 5 or the 7 to go, but it's not going to happen. Let's see if the wood settles down. You know, it's a rough angle. You're going to have to catch a lot of that wood. Let's. If you just catch the 5 pin, I don't think the wood will take the 7. So you have to take a piece of the wood, but. Hasn't got much room for error. Oh, oh great nice shot. shot. That's a terrific shot. Played it right off the cap. Right in the perfect location. Of course, his ball's breaking that way anyways. And, and it helped him carry the seven. Now for the spare fill. Right in the pocket. Oh, yes. Strike on spare for 150 for Bill Koffel. Three spares, three strikes. And a 150 opening game for Bill Koffold. He leads by 30 after one. We're coming back. seen Bob in a while. Uh, actually, I haven't either. I miss it because he usually gives us like the joke of the month. I was going to say, and perhaps yeah. more importantly, we haven't heard him for a while. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite a guy. If you haven't ever met Bob Perella, it's worth a trip down to <laughs> Paramount Industries just to stop in and say hello. He's quite a guy. Lee Koffel, lane 31 now, and finish with a flurry there with spare strike for that 150. Here you go again, watch out. This time he leaves the two and the eight. Difficult knocking those two pins out when you want to. That's, of course, the two pins that you take out for the half whister left. Oh, oh got man. it. Really nice. Very nicely done. You don't see that shot made very often. No. You usually see it made when you have ten pins up there. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Guy Pichette with some catching up to do and... Oh, that pin was on its way to taking out <laughs> the 10 pin and it caught the 5 pin just swung around. So now he's got a difficult 5, 9, 10. He's going to need some help by the ball or one of the pins on the 10 pin. No. Ball deadened as you saw by the wood in front and behind there on the five and the nine. So guy will have to take the ten box instead. Remember he trails by 30 and now he's opposite a mark here in the second. Yeah, as you mentioned just the opposite from last week. He had that lead and he kind of nursed it right straight through and this week uh, he's going to have to come from behind if he wants to make it two in a row. Possibilities on the one, three, and six. Of course, we tape candle pin stars and strikes here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. And we'd love to have you stop by for a taping sometime if you get a chance. Always call the lanes here and find out when we're going to be here next. And if you come down here for bowling on your own, of course, or to watch a taping of the Candlepin Stars and Strikes, you want to make sure and allow time to uh, stop into the Willow Tree North Restaurant. Great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Great food, friendly service, great prices, too. All at the Willow Tree North Restaurant right here inside Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. And? It's where the crew eats. That's it. <laughs> Bill Coffold now on the four, five, seven, and nine. It's a six fill on his spare in the second. And I'd say he'd want a piece of this wood as the ball goes by. Have it come off the right side wall as well as the ball going through for the five. That's nope. it. Nope, couldn't snap it. I believe that was the play, though. Yep. So he'll take the 10. See what happened with the wood after it snapped over. Well, it went off the wall and then back deep. Everything but the head pin. Well, an opening for Guy. Two open frames by Bill Coffold, and Guy would like nothing better than put two marks up before the break. Oh, this time the 1, 8, and 9 chopped out. As I always say, if you have the spread eagle, the 5 pin in there helps the 3 and the 2 pin jump from either right or left. So, possibilities here. Got to hurry. Nope, too far right. He's got a, some work to do just to bail this out with 8 or 9. And he does with the eight. Well, it looked like Guy Pichette was getting a little warm there at the end of the first game. He put some marks up and now he's looking for his first one in the second game. Thin hit that time, not a great mix, but he's got the three, seven, and ten. And his possibilities, if he's on that three pin with a wood in front of the ten and another one behind the three pin, he may carry the ten, uh, seven as well. 
Yes. yes. Great shot. And that is the first mark of the second game for Guy Pichette, and it takes us to a break. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes. Bill Coffold. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bowling term? Oh, that's a way to describe a <laughs> shot like that. That looked pretty good in one two pocket, but he leaves himself the six, eight, and nine, and piece of wood next to the eight pin. It's 55 at the halfway point, second game. Still has a comfortable 39 pin advantage, but Guy Pichette is working on a spare. Yikes, number two. <laughs> <laughs> that was two good looking balls in the pocket. The one three that time, and this time is the four, eight, and ten. Piece of wood moving out now. There's going to be some possibilities here, especially with a break on his ball from right to left. Looks like maybe just to the left of the red line and get the pin moving one way and the ball moving the other. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it's too high in the, on the wood. So a real good opening for Guy Pichette working on a spare already in the fourth. Well, now here is that opening for Guy Pichette as he comes up to fill that spare. I said, I was wow. going to say that looked like a good looking ball going in. It looked like it really broke sharp at the end, right straight into the head pin. The one, five, and eight out of there, just three on the spare. Oh, pretty good effort. And a 10 box, but he only gains four pins in that exchange. Those two frames, three and 10, as opposed to 10 and nine. Bill Coffold's side, lead now just 35. Guy right through the heart again, and he'll shoot at the two, four, and six this time. I have a feeling he's gonna make this. Ha! 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 This job is easy. <laughs> what do you like in the numbers this week? <laughs> Splits the two four and look, it jumps the two pin right over there. And another great spear by Guy Pichette. Bill Coffel finally puts one in the pocket and gets a decent break with one. Four seven left, piece of wood in between, and two pieces of wood in between. The spare. His second of this game, his eighth mark in the match. He's got three strikes. No bonus money yet this week. Leaving it short. Just four. For the spare. Oh, oh great yes. shot. You could pretty much see that one on the way down, Dan. He put that right in the right spot. Great shot for Bill Coffold. 
See the head pin take out the six and help with the ten pin. Just barely clipped the ten from behind. You make a shot like that, kind of gets the adrenaline flowing and relaxes you a little more. He's a little drought in there. Didn't have a mark. The third box through the six until those two. Guy Pichette now working on a spare. Boy, he almost suffered with the leave that time, but he gets seven. Three, six, and seven. Piece, double piece of wood in front of the seven. He may be able to make this one on the inside as well. Trying to split him. Oh, oh yeah, boy. great shot. Two in a row. Oh. Two fine shots. He splits them and uses the wood in between. That's great. Lead is now reduced to 32. Each bowler with a chance at bonus money now. First guy, Pichette. Right in the pocket. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, there it is. Yo. Strike for $25 in bonus money. And he was right in the one three pocket, and at first it looked like the seven, eight, nine. Look at this. And then the seven and eight go down, I mean nine and eight, eight and nine go down, and then finally the seven for the strike. And the bonus money. Billy Coffold. Oh, wow. Seven pin drop. That's the good news. Four, seven, and nine pins. No wood. Either slap the four into the seven and come off the wall, or possibly split the four and seven. Ooh. Tried to slap it off the wall. It didn't work. Nine box for Bill. 105 through nine. Remember, he had a 150 opening game. And a 30 pin lead coming into this game, but right now it's in danger of shrinking, although he puts a big strike up in the 10th. That was real tight in the one three pocket, and then everything goes but the four pin, and then you just trip the four. Picture perfect strike on that one. Now off to the left this time, half Worcester, but he has another ball. Gets out of it with a seven fill for a 122 and a two game total 272. 10 marks already for Bill Koffel. Now, Guy Pichette on a strike. He's already got three marks in a row. So if he puts up another one here, it'll be another $25. Oh boy. A sliding six and a falling three. <laughs> well. And a head pin that's a mile and a half to the left of those two pins now. <laughs> Yeah, he's shaking his head. He's got seven drop. This is on a strike, remember, so. Boy, I don't even know if he catches the head pin, if he can catch that wood now. Might have preferred that the three pin stay up. No. A little too fine there. I think he was trying for the that right side edge of the head pin plus the wood, but couldn't make it happen. So that ends the bonus money streak. And more importantly, Guy misses out on a chance to cut further into the lead, and now he's opposite a strike seven in the tenth. So he's going to need a mark just to overcome Bill Coffold here in this second game. He'll have a shot at one. Yeah, it's got the triangle. Two, four, and five. For the spare. Yes. Very nicely done there. Spare in the tenth, 121. That's his ninth mark. 
Lead is 24 for Bill Coffold. And Guy would have to drop at least 7 on this to maintain just the 24 pin deficit. Anything over 7, he'd cut it into it a little more. Hold it a bit. And it will be a 6 for 127 for Guy Pichette. Two game total, 247. So the lead for Bill Coffold is 25 with one game to go. We're coming right back. All right, third game. Here we go. Guy Pichette. Last week he had a sizable lead going into this third game. Today he trails by 25. Started to cross over in the 1 2, but caught a little heavy on the head pin. But no possibilities with the 3, the 4, and the 10. You have to be careful the ball doesn't fly. Looks like the 3 and the 4 will go if he hits the piece of wood in front of the 3, but. Where's the ball going to go? Yeah, that's it. Too high. You almost want to slow your ball down a little bit. Maybe a little less mm -hmm. impact will keep it in play, but sometimes you lose all sorts of rhythm and you pull the ball left or right. Don't forget, Saturday at noon, Next weekend, candle pin skins from the Londonderry Bowling Center. If you haven't uh, caught on to our new Saturday format, hope you'll tune in on Saturday at 12 noon here on the Winds of New England for candle pin skins. It's always a lot of fun. And then, excuse me, Dan. And then, of course, next Sunday, we're right back here with our semifinal match here on Stars and Strikes, the winner of this match against our number two seed, Bob Kelly. Pretty good looking first ball in lane 31 that time for Guy, but he left himself the 5-7, no wood. And an opportunity for Bill Koffel to increase his lead with two open frames. And a quick reminder too, Dan, that uh, in three weeks we will begin our annual mixed doubles series here on Stars and Strikes. Always a popular item, the mixed scotch doubles format. The men and the ladies come in and compete together. Bill Koffold, not the way he wanted to start this third game with the spread eagle. But at least he knows that Guy Pichette was not able to put up a mark in those first two. Look out, here it's come, here it comes. Couldn't get a break on the four pin and as a result might have prevented him from making the spare. It looked like it was going to go down and then a piece of wood stood it right back up behind the two pin. So it's a nine. in the pocket that time, but look at the leave. The four and the ten. Watch the wood, though. The farther to the right it comes, the better it's going to be for Bill. Now, Is that far enough? That's the question. I, I don't think so, but he still has a possibility of the wood coming off the wall, and who knows where the ball is going to end up. Right, depends on the speed of the ball, maybe. Oof, just missed with both. Well, an opportunity there for Bill. Let's it go by the board without any marks. And actually Guy gains a couple pins. So the lead now 23. Let's see what happened with the wood now. Just behind and the ball went up over the top. One, two, seven, and ten. Yes! Oh, oh the ball went down and got the ten pin. 
the ball never went up in the air. It just deflected right down for the 10 pin. Usually you want to split these two pins, the one and the two, but this time he plays it to the right and has, as Doug said, the ball takes the 10 and the head pin takes the two and the seven. That's another, he's had some great spare shots in this match. target but he got a break seven drop one two and four trying to make it two in a row no misfires uh, that would have been two in a row and a lot of heat on Bill Coffold but he pulled the ball to the left well right now the difference in this match is the Double strike that Bill Coffold threw in the first game. That is really the reason he's got the lead right now. That's 46 through four for Guy Pachette. Boy, it looked like a good ball going in. Ball, the pins look like they're picking up and going over the top rather than mixing and Taking a few of the friends down with him. This for a spare. Oh, that no. close. And it's nine. And the lead now drops to just 15 pins. Forget coming up at the end of the show, we'll have fifty dollars in our bonus ball contest. Bill Coffold, the one, two, nine, and ten with no playable wood. Nope. Well, this thing could get interesting here coming down the stretch. Certainly, certainly can. It's interesting already. <laughs> the lead under twenty. Good 10 for Bill Coffold, and we will pause right here. We'll take a break with Bill Coffold trying to hold on to his lead against Guy Pichette. We'll pick up the action here in box number seven of game three. While we were away, Bill Coffold fires a double strike to answer a strike that Guy Pichette put up on the board. But Bill with his second double of the day, and that should leave him in pretty good shape unless Guy Pichette can really light a fire here. So four and 10, double piece of wood out front, one resting next to it and another one facing him. And I'd have to take both pieces and see what happens, because I think the one to the left is too deep. Yeah, I think he tried to catch a bit of the cap of that one. And that'll be in the channel for a nine for Guy. going to need some marks here coming down the stretch. Yep. Last couple boxes on 31, he's right on, on the head pin, too full. And with a double strike working, time running out now on Guy. Good effort there. Nine box, two opens though, that's the story and Bill Coffo can make it very difficult right here. With the double strike working, $250 riding on this ball. Second chance he's had at it. Crosses over, but a little too light. And just five 
on the first ball, more importantly. And this for 25, if he could convert it for a spare. Nope. Of course, what's help helping him now, though, here is he's working against open boxes, and he's got the lead back up over 30. That'll be an 8. So the lead right now is 35 as Bill moves over to lane 31 for the 8th box. Bill with a chance at a 400 triple if he can put a couple of marks up here at the end. And yes! Oh, great shot. Had to wait, but he carried it. Terrific shot. The 13th mark for Bill Coffold. We've seen some great shot making here in this match today. Absolutely. Both bowlers. But the double strikes have been the difference for Bill Coffold. Guy trying to make something happen here, and the 10 pin will stay. That'll be a nine. Even three strikes here in the 10th. Wouldn't do it, barring a disaster for Bill Coffold. He's got a strike working and a 36 pin lead. Well, <laughs> he almost threw the first one. The eight pin remains. A lot of roadblocks in front of it, too. Oh, nice He's got shot. it for the spare, but it won't be enough for Guy Pichette. Bill Koffel gets the win. We will break away and come back and talk to both of the bowlers and have our bonus ball contest in a minute. Stick around. All right, there's a look at the final scoreboard as uh, Guy Pichette put up a mark in the 10th and uh, so did Bill Coffold, the strike nine in the 10th to finish with an even 400. Guy Pichette will take home the fourth place check for $175. Guy, I know you waited a long time. Congratulations, you got the big win last week and we hope to see you again soon. Oh, I'm sure. I'll All right. try not to let it wait so long. Okay, thanks very much, Thank Guy you. Pichette. Congratulations. Now Bill Coffold. For our bonus ball contest, we have $50 available, plus a couple of sets of brand new bowling balls as well from Paramount Industries, if we get a match here. It's five for Bill Coffold, and let's see for $50 if we have a match. We do not. Come on in, right in, Bill. Florence Emerson from Manchester, New Hampshire. Her guess was seven, so Florence will be sending you a gift from the NHCBA and from WNDS. Slide right in here, Bill. Congratulations. Uh, first time in singles for a little while. You got the win, and now next week, uh, only Bob Kelly will you have to face. Yeah, that's all. It's not going to be easy. Uh, <laughs> I hope I don't have to live or die by the double strike in that match because uh, those did it this time. And uh, I'm looking forward to bowling with Bob. I bowled against him in the doubles and done well, so uh, we'll see what happens next week. Definitely had the strike ball working. Seven spares and seven strikes today, including the two doubles. Congratulations. We'll see you next week. Bill Coffold with the win. We got to get out of here. Don't forget skins on Saturday at noon and we'll be back for the semifinals next Sunday at noon here from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. For Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week, everybody.